Ah, there we go. Well, I had I have half a dozen slides, so it's not very long. But uh, this is a, this is an implementation of GNU Emacs in Rust, where they're basically gradually replacing the uh, uh, the pieces that are written in C with functions in Rust. So if we look back at GNU Emacs, it was this the project was established back in uh, 1984 uh, by the infamous Richard Stallman. Uh, it's presently on version 25.3, and the engine, they've got a basic engine uh, that implements a Lisp implementation called ELISP that's, well, written in C. Then beyond that, most of, the, most of the functionality of the editor is implemented as Lisp code that runs on top of that. Um, and I wish I could show you this, but this is a little bit on the small side. Uh, Emacs, the Emacs code base consists of approximately 1.2 million lines of Emacs Lisp code and about 325,000 lines of C and then some other ancillary stuff. There's text, there's, there's text, um, there's um, tech files, oh yes, there's tech info stuff. There's some objective C uh, for compatibility with Mac OS, uh, make files and autoconf, there's like tens of thousands of lines worth of that crud. The goal of the Rust in Emacs project is to take Rust, which is a modern systems implementation language, um, which actually has some Toronto influences, because Graydon Hoare, who started uh, the project when he was working at, actually possibly before he got to Mozilla, um, used to he used to be with Red Hat here in Toronto. Um, the language is influenced by Haskell and Scheme and ML as well as obviously C and C++ to a degree. Um, it's designed to be memory safe. That is, you don't access pointers directly. Um, and it goes to quite a long, quite long lengths f at the compile stage to, s to prevent memory leaks. Um, there's type safety. It doesn't go full hog into the ML or Haskell sorts of multi, sorts of poly, polymorphism, where in effect you could you might define a structure that works on arrays, and then arrays could be of integers or strings or whatever else, and it just automatically just works. It's more expressly declarative than that. Um, a list, um, your data structures don't get all of the polymorphism, but uh, they, it's better than the old days. Uh, it, it offers, for the most part, memory safety without garbage collection. So for the most part, memory allocation is done statically where possible. So it doesn't need to get, um, um, well, you're, you're not forced to use, uh, to use garbage collection. It uses other, uh, it uses a reference counting system, but not the, um, not the simple old variety of the uh, uh, C++ and Objective C days. It's, they've got some new strategies. Um, it, with all of this, it also provides better concurrency safety, um, which would be helpful if you're trying to do multi-threaded activity in the language, because essentially you, uh, locks can get managed at the library level, or you could even create data structures that, uh, that do lockless uh, concurrency. That's one of the, the really cool things that people have been working on the last 10 years or so. Um, is to do is to have safe activities without actually having to uh, to submit any locks. Um, another thing that's that's very nice about it that's very nice for this project is that Rust has very very good um, 
integration with C code. So something that they've been able to do in this project is they, they in effect started the project by having minimal, minimal um, amounts of, um, of Rust code. I, I, I haven't looked at what they had right at the beginning, but it may have just been a little bit of structure, a little bit of stuff. Okay, we'll compile, we'll, we'll do the final build using a Rust piece so that main is written in Rust, but all of the functions are still in C. What they have been gradually doing over the last year, well, six, nine months, ten months now, is to gradually re-implement functions from the Emacs code base, re-implement re the C functions in Rust, and or use Rust libraries. Like uh, GNU Emacs has all kinds of things in it that, uh, that are blocks of not quite standard C code. Uh, there's, a, there's a base 64 encoder, which actually I got bitten. I found a bug in, in Remax uh, involving their use of, of the uh, base 64 encoding. But there's, um, they had an, the um, original Emacs implementation has its own thing in, in, implemented internally. It's got hash functions, like MD5 and such like, in, implemented internally. Various things like that where, well, they don't even have to implement some of this stuff because Rust offers well-debugged libraries that, that do these sorts of things. Um, occasionally, they have found bugs in GNU Emacs and reported bugs back as they, they found shortcomings in how it was passing uh, parameters around on the C side. So there's one of the future goals that's uh, uh, upcoming is they, they would like to replace the regular expression implementation. Rust has a really good regular expression implementation and the one that's in Emacs is not the C one, it's, it's not a common glib C one. It's, it's one that they built themselves. The Rust one is, actually there, there's a really, really good version of grep written in Rust that's faster than anything else I've ever seen. Um, they've got a famously good regular expression uh, pattern recognizer. They plan on using that. The code is seldom slower, it's often a little faster, and they're hoping for uh, faster and better in the future, particularly with things like if, if they can replace the regular expression management. Uh, my experience was a couple months ago, I first saw it and said, let me play with it. Installing it, uh, installing the dependencies was painless. I had to install a nightly build of Rust, which keeps itself up to date. It in, itself installs cargo pieces. Cargo is their, the package manager for Rust code. That draws in libraries on demand, and there's probably 30 or 40 libraries that they reference in the process of doing the build. And Updating it every every few days to, uh, for new builds because people have submitted patches takes a minute or two. I have a fair body of ELISP code that I've integrated into my Emacs initialization process. It all pretty much just works. And the, the exceptions have been things that tend to break when you get to new versions of Emacs anyways. So it's between Emacs versions, oh no, that, that Lisp function takes slightly different parameters because they did something, they had some intentional change. So there have been small differences, but things that were easy to rectify. I didn't notice the change of implementation language. Now it's about 20 to 20, a, a little over 20% of the code has been uh, the, they still have nearly 80% of the C left, but they're gradually wandering their way through it. And they're hoping to do more, and it's working fairly well already. 
They're on good terms with the GNU Emacs project. They submit pa uh, patches to Emacs every so often. Seems like, it seems like an interesting maybe winner. We'll see where it goes. It's been fun. Questions? Do you find it interesting that there's a BIM fork in Reddit and Go? I find it interesting how many uh, VI forks there are. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's probably a good thing. It's, it's a healthy thing that people are working actively on it. I heard that there was some revitalization of existing forks because of the competitive forks. If that's the case, even if the version in Go is, is a bust, if it encourages people to work on the original, that's a good thing. And that's part of what they're hoping for with this implementation on Emacs in Rust. They hope it's a little easier to, uh, for people to hack on the, on the Rust code than it is to hack on the C code. Uh, it's certainly like 25 or 30 years newer. 